let's look at semiconductors, because things are really getting elevated. First off, read this disclaimer carefully and like, subscribe, share and comment to gain full access to the content. We will look at two leveraged ETFs. We will look at the bullish one, the plus 3x semiconductors ETF, which is a massive 676% from the 52-week low, massively outperforming the Nasdaq and S&P 500, you know, big time. And you have the bearish one, the minus 3x, which is currently at 52-week lows. Obviously, so far, it's been very beneficial to be bullish uh, the semiconductors. Uh, let's uh, do a full analysis and before we draw a conclusion about how we should trade the semis going forward. So here is the seasonality of the semiconductor ETF, the SOXX, which is the benchmark. It's basically this one, the iShares VLX Semiconductor ETF. Okay. You can see that November is literally the strongest month, but we now have a new month, and that is December. December is a bit mediocre. It is 53% of the time it, the this ETF closes higher than it opened, so basically 50-50. January is also literally 50-50. Hence, the current period is kind of up in the air. Okay. So let's now look at the charts. So here is all the data we have. You can see that it went down uh, big during the financial crisis. But after that bear market, this ETF has been on a monster tear. We have a whopping 1,400-ish percent gain from the lows. Obviously, that's very good. But something that becomes very apparent if you look at the history of this ETF it goes up big, but also goes down big during a bull market. Here, the bottom of the financial crisis, but notwithstanding that we had a new bull market, this one had a big pullback of minus 33% here. Then here, uh, you know, in 2015, we had a pretty deep minus 25% pullback. Here a big pullback, here also a very big pullback. In other words, it is pretty clear that even though the CTF has big rallies, it also has big pullbacks. Hence, given that we now have had a monster rally after the pandemic plunge, we need to be a bit cautious here. This is not necessarily a good place to enter a new, you know, big bullish position. The history of this ETF, which we have seen, is full of deep corrections. And also some smaller ones every now and then. If you look at this correction here as an example, a bit of a pullback, but percentage-wise, that was minus 15-ish percent. If you used a leveraged, you know, bearish, product, that could be a pretty big gain for a bear. If you look here at the RSI, you can see that it, as far as the weekly RSI, it can be overbought for longer periods, hence just because it's overbought now doesn't mean that we can say that, oh, it's, it's instantly a short. Let's now look at the daily data points. We are very far away from the 200 day moving average. If you look at some prior times where we were quite far away, like here, a big correction uh, ensued. If you go back here, you see that when the distance got too big, it started to behave more erratically. And eventually we did have a deeper correction. If we go further back here, let's now do some studies here, because the prior history of a security will give us some good indication of what could happen going forward. Here there is some very elevated uh, distance from the 200 day and the price. And then things start to get a bit rocky until we get, you know, we do get a deep correction here, here, but also a very deep pullback here, a lot of chaos in this region. So basically the history of this product suggests 
that this is a high risk situation, you know, from a bullish perspective, but it could be quite profitable from a bearish one. Okay. Uh, let's now look at uh, the correlation between the ETF and the leveraged uh, alternatives. So sucks L. So this is this is the ETF if you are bullish, and here you can you can see that there is um, you know long term we have an eighty six percent positive correlation that is pretty good. I would like it to be bigger, but eighty six is decent. If we go here to the shorter time frame, there's a 99%, so close to perfect correlation. So as far as the bullish leveraged ETF, it works pretty well. Let's look at the, um, you know, the bearish one. Yes, yes. We start here with the long time frame. So minus 75% um, negative correlation. So pretty decent tracking. If we go here to the shorter time frame, okay, here we have investing.com. Um, yeah, they have not um, corrected the chart after the uh, stock, well, the split. So that is this distortion. Hence, we need to take this negative correlation here with a grain of salt. Okay. Okay, so basically, there seems to be some decent tracking of the underlying index when it comes to both the bullish one and the bearish one but generally speaking we do see that the leveraged product that um, is in line with the primary trend it has a stronger correlation than the one that is against and that is because of uh, the splits that will have a very big impact on the one that is against the primary trend, which in this case has been very bullish. So here you can see the expense ratio, assets under management, uh, heavily tilted, tilted here towards the semiconductor bulls. The average daily volume as well, very much in favor of the bulls, which has made sense uh, so far. If we go here to the ETF comparison between the S&P 500 and the semiconductor ETF, you know, the unleveraged one, you can see here that, um, you know, obviously the assets under management is much bigger for the S&P 500. Uh, so that's not like a big shock. Let's rather go here to uh, some fundamentals. Here we can see that the price earnings ratio for the S&P 500 is 34, which is rather elevated. The price book ratio is 3.8, which is also pretty stretched. If we go to the semiconductor ETF, price earnings is 31 and 5.7 for price book. Hence, both are, you know, you know, they are really stretched. Hence, um, from you know, like a fundamental perspective, we do expect correction for both. So what do I think is going to happen going forward with the semiconductor? sector. Looking far into the future, like multiple years, then I'm certainly bullish the semiconductors. But looking at the coming months, then the seasonality suggests, you know, basically 50-50. But when you view the seasonality in context of the latest price development, which has been euphorically bullish, and given that... Um, the semiconductor ETF has a very long history of, of uh, you know, corrections, both small but also s quite a few deep ones. I think that we could make a case that is a bit bearish for the coming months. Further, when, when we look at the fundamentals, they also suggest that not only the semiconductors but also the S&P 500 it's pretty stretched at these levels. We are very much due just a basic correction. So that is what I would lean. And I would lean in that direction based on the evidence at hand. Whatever you do, of course, you want to be careful in this market, uh, respect uh, the trends, and always have stops in place.